So I'm pretty garbage with hand tools. And that's just mostly because of the fact that hand tools are expensive and I really don't have much experience with them. I think I'm just too used to flipping on a power tool switch, kicking my legs back and letting that do all the work. I realized I'm, I guess, pretty good at making cutting boards and bad with hand tools. So I figured if I combine the two of them, I could probably come up with a somewhat mediocre piece. And I know that the best way to learn things is to just practice them. So let's go ahead and send it. So to start this cutting board off, I will be grabbing this short piece of curly maple that is just conveniently placed right on the top of my wood rack. After a few quick smacks, I will be taking this board over to the miter saw. But after this, I realized, hey, I am supposed to be using hand tools. So in the spirit, I got out my flush trim saw and cut the second board. And this was honestly not the best idea, but we got it done. I finished up the cut with my pull saw and honestly, once you got both cut side by side, you could easily tell my cut with the hand tools was done on the right and the miter saw did the job on the left. Now, obviously I'm kidding, but anyways, after that, we can get these boards milled up to the right size. Once I go ahead and get both of these boards glued up, I could honestly call it a day here and finish this cutting board up, but that would be just kind of crazy. I want to add a pretty cool element to it. And like I said in the beginning, I really want to practice with a couple hand tools. So my idea for the rest of this project was to add a diamond shaped, almost digital camo style pattern with a bunch of different species of woods inlaid into the cutting board. Now, if that didn't make any sense, I promise it will here in a second. So my plan here is to cut out three different size squares out of all this scrap wood that I have laying around. The sizes will be two inches, inch and a half, and one inch. And that's really nothing particular, it's just the size I decided to go with. My crosscut sled made pretty quick work of all these cubes. And if you don't have a crosscut sled, I would definitely recommend making one. And if you're wondering how to make one, I do have a video on my channel, so go ahead and check that out if you're curious. Once I had all my blocks cut out, it was time to get ready to inlay all these. My goal was to do a couple rounds of inlays since I only have enough space to do a few blocks at a time. Since this is a newer experience for me, I thought it would be a good idea to cover my area that I wanted to fill with blue tape and go ahead and cut it out. My idea was that this would help me glue down all of my blocks to the piece without having them sticking to the wood. You'll see later why this really wasn't that helpful, but I guess at least it looked nice in the end. So after I have all that dealt with, I could start laying out all my two inch blocks just randomly throughout that diamond. I really had no specific layout in mind. I just wanted to get a good base of colors for the next couple round of inlays. Now to attach these blocks, I actually have some blue tape on the back of them and I'm using some CA glue with some quick set activator in order to quickly attach them down. A lot of these larger woodworking YouTubers have a Starbond glue creator code and I can say that I don't so I can also say that I definitely recommend you work in some CA glue into your workshop. It is such a game changer. Anyways, I got each square marked off with my marking knife and the blue tape here caused another problem. When I was marking them, I had to cut through the layer of blue tape first to get down to the wood and this in turn didn't give me the best cut lines when I was going to chisel. Next I'll be clearing most of the waste with some Forstner bits and you can see my drill started to die here so the best thing to do was tactically reload a fresh battery in. The things I love the most about Forstner bits is they make a huge mess and like any woodworker who doesn't love cleaning up messes it's just so fun to clean like come on i can't be the only one out there that loves spending almost eight hours a day just cleaning their shop instead of getting anything done all right all right enough joking around you can see here why this blue tape was actually giving me problems when i went to route out the rest of the waste 
it was not allowing the base plate of the router to slide freely. So I ended up just taking this all off. But if you were paying any attention to before, I labeled all the blocks on the blue tape with my pencil. So now all that was gone. So luckily I had all of it on video. So later I could go refer back to which block went where. But for people that don't record everything they do, this could definitely be a problem. So finally, it was time to start doing some chisel work. This was the part I was most excited for. But this excitement quickly turned to disappointment. I realized I had no idea what I was doing and my chisel lines were not straight. They weren't good. I just was honestly disappointed and frustrated to say the least. This first round of eight inlays that I did probably took me over a span of a week to do. And not because it took a long time, it was because I just didn't wanna do it. I was so discouraged and thought about scrapping this project so many times. But I realized the more I do it, the better I will eventually get. And eventually that is actually what happened. I had to realize that when people start something new, they're usually bad at it. And I just wasn't good at accepting that. I would consider myself a pretty competitive person. When I do anything, I want to be good at it, or at least try to be good at it. And when I'm not, it's a big slap in the face for me. But it all depends if I want to get up and keep trying or just give up. And luckily here, I kept trying. All right, enough about my cliche story telling you to just keep trying. <laughs> Anyways, it was finally time to put the plugs in the inlays. And this was actually a pretty satisfying part. I didn't know whether to use a block to hit them in or just hit them in straight with the hammer. I don't think it really made a difference either way. But like I said... This was fun to do and satisfying. So some of you may be thinking this already, but I could have made this whole project on a CNC machine if I really wanted to. Well, kind of. I don't have a CNC machine, but if I did, I could have easily cut out the plugs and the inlays without a problem on my CNC, and it would have took me a quarter of the time. But if I would have done that, I know I wouldn't have learned as much as I did during this process. Whether you're just starting out or you're a proven professional woodworker, I think there's always something out there that we can learn to make our woodworking skills better. I think what I'm about to say is going to really make the CNC people mad, but honestly, it's how I feel. I honestly think CNCs make us woodworkers lazy. But hold on, hold on. Before you go ahead and write your angry comment saying, it's not just pushing buttons, there's more to it than that. I understand that. But at the same time, I think it allows us to get lazy and not practice our skills as much as we should. Say you're making a carved out sign for the front of your house with your name on it. Yeah, it would be cool to just slap it on the CM machine, type in your name and have it carved out. But wouldn't it be even cooler to hand carve that sign yourself and then hang it in front of your house? Yes, it would take three to four times probably longer, but at the same time, I think it would be three to four more times more gratifying when you finish that final hand carved result. Anyways, you get the point I'm trying to make. I'm just trying to help this video not be as repetitive because there are a lot of repetitive steps on it. With that being said, I get to do my favorite thing again and make a mess with my Forstner bit. This time I get to drill out 18 holes instead of just eight. So an even bigger mess. So in my shop, I like to say safety is number one priority, but I can't truly back that up. But here is a time where it definitely is number one priority. When I'm routing this out, I always make sure to wear safety glasses because I had an experience where a piece of sawdust flew back into my eye and it actually scratched my eyeball. I didn't even know it was possible to scratch an eyeball, but let me tell you, it was not fun. It basically felt like I had that piece of sawdust stuck in my eye for two days straight. It was miserable. So from that day on, whenever I'm routing at eye level, I will always wear safety glasses. And honestly, I should start wearing them more. And I feel like there are a lot of people that are in the same boat as I am. 
On the second round of inlays, I could definitely feel myself getting a lot better with chisels. My gaps were getting tighter and I was just getting a little bit quicker. I actually found that doing chisel work like this can actually be very therapeutic. I found that just throwing some headphones on and putting in a good podcast can make the time fly by. I am pretty curious to know whether you guys just like dead silence or you throw some headphones in and listen to a podcast or some music. So whatever you prefer, let me know down below. I honestly can say I love when I get new comments and being able to read them and interact with you all. Anyways, we are on to our third round of inlays and at this point I'm trying to cover up as much of the maple as I possibly can with the different species. For those of you that are very new to inlaying like me or want to get into it, I highly recommend you get a marking knife like I'm using here. I tried using a pencil one time to mark my inlay and it was a disaster. The marking knife gives a perfect groove for your chisel to fit in. Here I just needed to still prove to everyone that I am wearing my safety glasses and you should too if you're ever doing anything like this. So at this point of the build, everything is starting to get a little repetitive, which is one of the reasons that I'm starting to skip through this process a little bit faster. But even though it is repetitive for me, it is also really important to keep practicing this skill. I've heard somewhere that it takes 10,000 hours of a skill to completely master it. And while I'm maybe 10 to 15 hours into this skill and I have a long way to go, I certainly want to still get good at it. The last thing I want to do is be working on a large table that needs some bow ties or some sort of inlay in and I mess it up because that could be an expensive mistake. So I would say each inlay that I do is one less chance that I have to mess up in the future on a way more important project. Once I am finally happy with all the inlays that I did, it's finally time to finish this guy up. And the first thing that I'm going to do in the finishing process is get it sanded and smoothed out. I do have 120 grit sandpaper on my drum sander and it did come with 80 grit sandpaper. And I found the 80 grit sandpaper was just a little bit too harsh, so I switched it out. Anyways, I'm going to be adding a real small 3 16th of an inch round over just to not take too much away of the main focal point of the board. I have to admit, I was so excited just to be done with this board and get it finished up, but I did want to try a different type of finishing method for a cutting board that I usually do. And I did a little research and found that Rubio Monaco is actually food safe. And the reason I decided to go with this is because I'm probably not going to be using this cutting board for actual cutting purposes very often. So I wanted to try a new finish just to see how it would turn out. For a cutting board like this, I would typically go with just a simple mineral oil. But like I said, I wanted to try something different here. And as you can see, I think it looks awesome. For those of you that don't know, Rubio Monaco is typically marketed as a hardwood flooring finish, which in turn kind of doesn't make sense when applying it to a cutting board, but you can see how it just brings out the curl and the curly maple there, and I think it is just a beautiful finish. Anyways, once I have it all buffed off, we are coming down the home stretch here. The last thing I need to do is just to add some small rubber feet to all four corners, and then we can go ahead and try to take some fancy pictures of this board with my newer setup. I'm still working on my photography skills, but I think I ended up managing to take some pretty decent pictures. Anyways, I appreciate everyone for watching and staying till the end of this video. I would really appreciate if you would like and subscribe. I will see you in the next one.